الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا So I was going to wait a second but since that's the case all the students who have their back against the wall over here go ahead and move over to the fifth row where there's space over there go ahead Rayan, Amma go ahead stand up go ahead and move over to that space where there's and then all of you against the wall over there also move to your left, move over to your left Jazakumullahu khairan Allah is the one who deserves all praise Allah is the one to turn to Allah is the one to seek help from we do seek help from each other but ultimately when somebody is able to help you is because Allah allowed it so seek help from Allah before you seek help from your friends Allah is the one that we should put our trust in and rely upon He sent His Messenger Muhammad وسلم, as a beacon of light and guidance for all of mankind until the Day of Judgment He sent him to pray to convey the message and sent all the Muslims after him responsible to also convey the message to those who didn't receive it the message of light and guidance for all of mankind until the Day of Judgment Allahumma salli alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Ya Allah send greetings, peace, blessings from us to him Ameen Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallim I remember the day I remember the two days that each of my two sons were born indeed that's not a day that anybody can forget one of them took a little lo longer to come out he was comfortable the other one came out quicker both of them as soon as they came out what did they do? they cried I don't like this, I don't like this at all I mean that's not what they said but that's what it meant and then both of them both of them for the first five minutes of their life or for their first five minutes out of mom's belly they were trying to look at mom they had stopped crying within a few seconds and they were now nicely resting on mom's chest and they're trying to, to look at mom because they realize that something's different now they're still just very, just very comfortable as they were in the belly but now they're out and they're chilling, comfortable, and trying to look at mom and listening to mom because for several months before they came out all they knew was the voice of mom and a little bit of voice of dad a little bit also but they kept on hearing mom's voice and when they were in the belly of the mother basically all they know is that place and everything was nice and comfortable everything was taken care of and Allah calls that place not Allah calls that place the Arabic language calls that place Ar-Raham and Allah uses the plural of Raham in the Quran Al-Arham that place where the baby grows up before he comes out or she grows up before she comes out now listen to this. This is the end of Surah Hud. And it's a particular place in the Quran. It's an interesting place. I'll mention something about that in a minute. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Walau sha'a rabbuka laja'ala an-nasa ummatan wahida. If Allah wanted, all human beings would all be the same, following the same ways of life. Wala yazaluna mukhtalifin they will never stop disagreeing they will never stop having conflicts with each other this mankind that Allah created except whoever Allah or your Lord has done 
رحم إلا من رحم ربك ربك did رحم those people that Allah did رحم to what does it mean I think you know the translation already mercy but what does it mean mercy I gave you the example of a baby coming out of his of the of the belly of his mother for a reason the first thing the baby does is cry because it felt so comfortable it was so nice they were so happy in the belly of the mother and then when they're nice and sitting on the chest and they can hear mom again and they're comfortable and they're right next to mom they feel comfortable again they feel happy again and they're not crying anymore Rahima. When Allah shows mercy, when Allah showers a person with His mercy, that is the ultimate way for somebody to feel so good. Feel so good about themselves, feel so good about their life, feel so good about the people around them, feel so good about everything. And that's what you call happiness. That's what you call contentment. Now Allah continues. وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ For that He created them. That is why Allah created you. Because Allah wants you to feel so good about yourself, feel so good about your life, Feel so good about everything you get from Allah because you're always being showered with Allah's mercy. That is why Allah created you. Now, imagine, try to remember the last time that you felt so good about yourself, so comfortable about everything that's going on in your life. Let's imagine that you were just sitting on the couch and feeling really good, feeling happy. Maybe you had a great day. If you were to stay like this for days in the same position, very quickly, very quickly, you would get bored. You would need some change. I remember when I was about your age, middle school, high school, I also used to play, we didn't have video games, we had computer games. If you were to play a computer game, you would find it pretty lame. We had computer games. I used to play computer games. I was a kid just like you. You know when the computer game was the most fun? Was it was not when it was not too long. When you spent too long on the computer, it wasn't fun anymore. And when the computer time took away from something I knew I needed to do, that was even less fun. That was it wasn't even fun anymore. It was the kind of fun that makes you unhappy after it's done. But that's not what Allah wants. Allah wants you to be happy. And that's not the same thing as having fun. Having fun is one thing that can make you happy. But if you do too much of it, you're not going to achieve happiness. Allah wants you to be happy. So Allah does want you to have fun, but in a particular measure. He wants you to have a balanced life. He wants us to work hard, to achieve things, so that when we have fun, we still feel like our life is worth something. We're doing something with our life. That's what Allah wants for us. And so now we go to surahs that most of you are already very familiar with. Surah Al-Fajr and Surah Al-Balad. Where Allah explains a lot to us about how to not just have fun, but to actually be happy in your life. Feel successful in your life. Feel successful in your years as a middle school student or high school student. Feel successful in your college. Feel successful in your career. And you know what? Feel successful even if you don't go to college. Feel successful and feel happy and feel like you're doing something good with your time, that Allah is taking care of you, that you're living a good life, you feel good about yourself. You feel good about people around you. 
you feel good about what you're doing with your life. Allah gives us quite a bit of guidance in Surah Al-Fajr, in Surah Al-Balad. The first part of Surah Al-Fajr, as you probably already know very well, Allah swears by a certain number of times. He swears by the morning time before the sun comes up, Al-Fajr. He swears by 10 nights. Which 10 nights? We don't know for sure. It might be the 10 first days of Dhul Hijjah, the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Either way, the best time of the year. Allah also swears by the even and the odd. And Allah swears by the part of the night that's right before Fajr. Because if you want to be happy in your life, if you want to find success, feel good about yourself and what you're doing with your life, you need to take advantage of those times. In French, they have this phrase that the world belongs to people who wake up early. <laughs> so Allah swears by these times because these times will help you achieve that success. The second part of Surah Al-Fajr, Allah tells you, and you probably already know this, there are going to be some pretty messed up people in the world. All of us know of pretty messed up people in the world. Pretty messed up things that are happening in the world. And in Surah Al-Fajr, Allah tells us about three pretty messed up people. The people of Ad, the people of Thamud, and the people of Fir'aun. And these people, Allah says, yeah, they're pretty messed up. Not just pretty messed up. They made sure to be as messed up as you can be. And to make everybody as messed up as possible. There's always going to be messed up people. Is Allah not going to stop them? Is Allah not going to be just and stop their corruption and stop their oppression? Of course He is. Of course Allah wants you to live a good life. Allah wants you to find happiness. Don't let the messed up people mess up your happiness. There's always going to be messed up people. There's going to be messed up people around you, preventing you from doing what you're trying to do. There are going to be times when people around you make you very upset. Don't let other people's actions prevent you and take you away from achieving your own success. Then Allah talks about the mindset, the wrong mindset that people have. Messed up people are always going to exist. You can't change that. What you can change is your mindset. And what is the mindset to be successful? فَأَمَّا insan. Think about this mindset. When Allah blesses him, honors him, gives him plenty of things as a test. What is his mindset? He only feels honored. He doesn't realize it's a blessing from Allah. He doesn't appreciate the blessing. He only feels like he's special. He only feels proud and arrogant, and doesn't appreciate that it's a blessing from Allah. He feels like he deserves. Rabbi Akraman, my Lord has chosen me and I deserve these things. That's the mindset of a person who will never achieve success and happiness in life. When they feel entitled, they feel like they deserve what they're getting. They don't appreciate that it's a blessing from Allah. Wa <laughs> When any limitation comes, it's not even that they lost their family member because of a tyrant who threw a bomb on them. It's not some crazy messed up situation. It's just that Allah limited a little bit, limited a little bit, the fun that they had. Allah limited a little bit the time that they could spend on the computer. Allah limited a little bit the amount of money that they made. Allah limited a little bit something. Allah limited a little bit the friendship with their friends. Just a little bit of limiting. What is their mindset? Ah, oh, my life is terrible. My life is so miserable. Why is Allah disgracing me like this? They have a mindset of complaining. They have a mindset that 
When things are good, they feel like they deserve it. And when they don't, they, when they don't get what they think they should deserve, they complain. They spend their whole life complaining. Those two mindsets, feeling entitled and complaining, these are the two mindsets, my friends. Allah is telling us, you can never be successful if you have these two mindsets. If you feel entitled and you don't appreciate that it's a blessing from Allah, if you feel entitled and you don't appreciate the person that gave it to you, and if you're always complaining about things, these two mindsets, Allah is telling you, you cannot reach itma'nan. You cannot be an nafsul mutma'inna. And you know where this word belongs, right? At the end of the same surah. That's why I'm telling you, if you have this mindset, Allah is telling you, you won't achieve success. You won't achieve to feel good about yourself, to feel good about your life, to feel good about what you're achieving in life, to feel good about the people around you. Change your mindset because you're not going to be able to change the messed up people in the world. That's not going to change. They're always going to be there. So how do you change your mindset? Well, Allah gives more guidance. I said He gives a lot of guidance in those surahs. Kalla, بل لا Do something beneficial for other people. Don't complain and feel like you deserve what you're getting. Do, th do something to bless other people. Take care of the orphan. Give food to the poor. These are just suggestions Allah is giving you. Work hard to do something good. Allah is saying, working hard to do something good. It might just be that you're going to study for the tests and not just play on the computer for the whole evening. That might be the good thing that you're doing. That mindset of trying, at least trying to do something good. That mindset is what Allah is telling you will achieve your success. You have achieved that success. Oh, you who has achieved the success of feeling so good about your life, feeling so successful, feeling so happy and content. Nafsul mutma'inna. You have achieved that. So what is the way to achieve that according to Surah Al-Fajr? Number one, wake up early. Talk to Allah before Fajr or at Fajr. Number two, you can't fix the messed up people in the world. Take care of your mindset. Number three, what is your mindset? Do your best. Work hard and do your best to try to be beneficial and help others. الحمد لله الذي هدانا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله We ask Allah that He makes us among those people who get to hear on the Day of Judgment يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة Say Ameen because this was a dua And what this means is that I'm asking Allah to make all of us people who will follow the guidance of Allah and have the right mindset in our life such that we can be successful. So that we can feel good and happy and content about our life, regardless of all the difficulties that come our way. Nobody is going to have an easy life. So that's now Surat Al-Balad. You think success in life is to have a lot of money? You think success in life is to have a good career that you have plenty of free time to have fun? You think success in life is to have a big house? You think success in life is to have good grades in school? You think success in life... Allah says no! La! No to anything you think about success in life. Everybody, لَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Everybody is going to get their fair share of struggle. We said in Surah Al-Fajr, at least struggle a little bit. Try, try your best. Do something beneficial for others. Every, word, every human being is going to get their fair share in struggles. So, if you choose that you're going to work hard to help others to do something good, then you're choosing your own struggle. If instead, 
you choose to just have fun as much as you can, then guess what? It's like you're telling Allah, Ya Allah, you choose my struggles for me. What would you rather do? Choose your own struggle? Try a little bit to do something good for others? Or let Allah choose the struggles for you? Because no matter what Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Everybody's going to get their fair share of struggles. You get to choose. So why don't you فَكُّ رَقَبَ Why don't you إِطَعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ ذِي مَسْغَبَ Why don't you يَتِيمًا ذَا مَقْرَبَ أَوْ مِسْكِينًا ذَا مَتْرَبَ Why don't you? Why don't you try your best to help others? Why don't you work hard to do something good? And yet again in Surah Al-Balad, Allah is giving you suggestions. These are suggestions. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Whatever it is that you're working hard to do something good, then you're choosing your own struggles in life. No matter what, you're going to get them. If you choose to struggle for something good, you will achieve success and happiness in this life and in the hereafter. Allahumma ja'alna yawm al-qiyamati min al-ladheena yuqalu lahum Ya ayyatuhan nafs al-mutama'inna. Ameen. May Allah make us among the people on the day of judgment that they are told, Ya ayyatuhan nafs al-mutama'inna. You were successful. You did great. You are the best. Be proud of yourself. May Allah make us those people. May Allah change our mindset to be appreciative of all the things that He has given us and not feel entitled. May Allah help us to not worry about all the messed up things that the messed up people are doing in the world. Ameen. And may Allah help us to be awake before Fajr, talking to Him. Because that is the time, that is the quickest shortcut to success in life and the hereafter. May Allah make us among the people who are always in the masjid for Fajr and Jama'ah. Ameen. Rabbana awzi'na an nashkura ni'matak allati an'amta alayna wa ala walidina wa anna amala salihan tardah wa adakhilna bi rahmatika fi ibadika salihin. And this is dua, so say Ameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina athab al-nar. ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما آمين ربنا ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين and last dua that I'm going to make is to ask Allah to bring relief and to strengthen the happiness and contentment and, and, and good feeling of all the people who are under the oppression of oppressors. Ameen. Allahumma rabbana aghith al-mustadafeen min al-mu'mineen wal-muslimin fi kulli makan. Ameen ya rabbal alameen wa aqim as-salah.